Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to look at the operation of a push-pull amplifier stage and we're going to actually use the oscilloscope um, to see what's going on inside the circuit. Now I've been tinkering with electronics since I was about 10 years old and certainly a lot of my uh, learning in the past has been either out of books or simply reading about things and uh, just accepting the results as, as, being, as being correct. One of the great things about having an oscilloscope, and I've really only had a decent oscilloscope now for about a year, is the ability to actually see what's going on inside circuits, and you only need modest equipment to do that. So today isn't really about the class, this particular class of amplifier, or the bias, or the, the operation of push-pull circuits um, per se. It's really about how you can use your instruments to visualise what's going on uh, in the circuit and to try and understand in perhaps a deeper way uh, what, what the textbooks are telling you. So uh, let's start by having a look at the circuit in question and um, seeing what, uh, what we can do with it. Here then is the circuit of the push-pull amplifier and we've got input on the left hand side feeding through two decoupling capacitors and a point to note there is they're both polarised capacitors and they're actually the opposite way around to each other that's because one's dealing with positive going part of the cycle with the ones dealing with the negative going half of the cycle there's a bit of a clue to how that works with the two diodes as, which are part of the biasing network for the base of the transistors uh, signal then gets fed um, to the base of each transistor and depending whether it's the positive or the negative um, side of the pulse one or other of the transistors will will conduct and amplify the output of those from the from the two emitters uh, is decoupled the DC is decoupled via 100 microfarad capacitor and then there's a 10 ohm load resistor so the plan is feeding a, a sine wave uh, to the input and those two transistors will do their job um, conducting either half of the waveform as, uh, as appropriate and hopefully what we're going to see on the output is an amplified output that actually is a smooth combination of the two half waveforms and one of the consequences of not getting either the, the supply voltage or the biasing quite right is that you can get distortion and the distortion can look a little bit like that this is crossover distortion and we'll now go and look um, at the actual circuit in action and, and see that uh, happening for ourselves so let's go and look at this circuit on the bench okay so here's the circuit that I've just described to you and I've got it built up here on the breadboard um, won't go through too much detail but we've got the two transistors here these are the two capacitors on the input that's the output capacitor that's the output load and here are the two bias resistors and there, there are the diodes and I've got it uh, I've got an ammeter connected in series with the supply currently it's drawing about as you can see about 42 milliamps the yellow trace on the scope is the one kilohertz signal on probe one here which is the input and the blue trace is the same one kilohertz signal on the output uh, I've got slightly different um, scales because obviously there's amplification going on but we're not particularly interested in the amplification right now we're interested in in the various effects on the circuit now I talked just now about um, each transistor um, ampl amplifying half the signal and to illustrate that I've put a couple of links in here so if I take one of these links out that will effectively deprive one of the transistors of its input and just watch what happens to the blue trace when I do that and as you can see all that's left on now is the transistor which is doing the, the negative half of the signal um, and when I uh, make that circuit again we get the, the sine wave restored so important point to note here is that you know really really nice example there of one of those transistors is working and one isn't and then when I supply it with input again the other one kicks in and starts to work and I think that's quite a nice visual example of exactly what's going on now we've got this uh, circuit built um, exactly as, as per its its parameters and I've currently got it running at about 10 volts power supply drawing 41 
uh, 42 milliamps and you've got the display as you can see there so what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to reduce the voltage and that'll have the effect of changing uh, all sorts of things in the circuit not least the bias but watch in particular now the blue trace as I come down losing some amplitude but now you can possibly notice there's a bit of a kink occurring about halfway up the waves and if I take it down even further that becomes a very obvious almost shelf and what you've got there is what's called crossover distortion and you can get crossover distortion at the correct voltage if you haven't got the bias point set right and those two diodes are helping to get the bias right but what you've effectively got there is the negative half going part of the amplification and the positive half going of the amplification and at, there's a point in the middle when neither transistor is on so you've effectively um, it pauses and that's what you've got that um, that very obvious notch uh, you can also see the current consumption is reduced dramatically now 25 milliamps in, in an audio circuit uh, that would manifest manifest itself as distortion so I'm now going to come back up with the voltage slowly you see the current coming back up I'm just passing 7 volts there just passing 8 volts and as I approach about 9 volts it's not quite yes so I think now that's that's about that's about gone so um, at 40 milli 41 milliamps about nine and a half volts the circuit is um, working fine now if I increase the voltage beyond that uh, you eventually start to see the effect of driving it too hard because the bottom of the waveform starts to change and obviously that's not what you want so there we go that is crossover distortion the classic shape of it that's biased correctly and I think that's a nice visual example of something I've heard described many times on a circuit but um, when you can see it on your scope it for me it just makes all the difference so now exactly the same conditions but I've got rid of the uh, trace one because I just want you to be able to see nice and clearly I'm not not entirely sure how well that's coming out it's difficult to get a, a picture here without um, seeing reflections in the display but I'll, I'll get the screen grabs as well so we're at about 10 volts about 40 what, 43 and a half milliamps and if I increase the voltage you can see the waveform starts to distort on the bottom just there but now and in fact you can see a little bit of distortion running around the bottom of the wave so I'm coming back down again now we're at about 10 volts again uh, waveform looks sinusoidal no problem at all so now I'm going to drop down and straight away you can see that kink starting to occur and as I approach six, that 6 volt supply and it's now very obviously got the, the crossover distortion there's also a little bit of distortion on the negative going part of the sine wave as well but that is a nice example of uh, how crossover distortion looks on an oscilloscope okay well you've seen the results of, of the circuit in action there um, and obviously normally having a, a non-linear situation i.e distortion creeping in uh, is something that we don't normally want but that isn't always the case and we have got another uh, sense available to us to to understand what's going on inside the circuit and that's uh, the ability to listen so let's now have a quick look at the same circuit and this time we're going to get it hooked up to a speaker and hopefully we should be able to hear the effects of that crossover distortion okay you can probably hear a change in the sound quality that's because I'm using the uh, different microphone to enable me to uh, Get you to hear the audio tones a little bit better than they would normally from my uh, from my tight clip mic. So I've got exactly the same setup. Currently got the um, amplifier running in its normal mode, no distortion on the curve, and I've got the app connected to a little amplified speaker, which I'm just going to turn up. Uh, it's a slightly irritating tone. What I've done is uh, previous tests were done with a one kilohertz signal. I've actually now reduced that to 400 hertz so that it's easier to hear um, the change uh, as the distortion creeps in. So I'll just turn that sound up. 
So there's the 400 hertz tone coming off the speaker. So now I'm going to back off the voltage until we get the crossover distortion. So you can hear that sort of slight raspiness in tone, which I suppose is the best way to describe it. And obviously, um, that certainly if you're using this as an audio amplifier, that's that's something that uh, that you wouldn't want. Uh, let's have a look what's what's causing that distortion. If we move that waveform down there, and then we enable the fast Fourier transform display, this purple plot here is now giving us um, a frequency domain display so I'm going to change the time base a little to increase the number of samples so you can see a little bit better. So we've got the fundamental frequency here and we've got um, a second harmonic but third, fourth, fifth, sixth, uh, they're very very small compared to the, to the fundamental. And that's it, that's in normal mode. So now what I'm going to do, I won't turn the tone up again and put you through that pain, I'm going to turn the voltage down again now and I want you to pay particular attention to the odd harmonics, so that's third and fifth. So as we come back down, the crossover distortion begins. It's there now, and as you can see, when we've got strong crossover distortion, the odd order harmonics are much stronger, so that's third and fifth harmonic, and that effectively is what you're hearing. Now, that's not all bad would you believe because in an audio amplifier you clearly would not necessarily want the harmonics if you were using this as part of a guitar amplifier and you wanted to obtain some some distortion for a different sound you might want the harmonics that's uh, quite a common use and also in in radio transmitters or receivers we sometimes want to multiply frequency so causing a, an amplifier stage to run in a, in a non-linear fashion and produce harmonics uh, would actually enable us to then filter out the unwanted ones and to be able to uh, use the, the harmonics as part of a, a frequency multiplication process. Hopefully uh, just then you were not only able to see but also hear the effect of the crossover distortion and also see from the fast Fourier display what was actually uh, producing uh, the, the change in sound, those, those harmonics. My Siglent scope is able not only to show the fast Fourier display but also to label up the harmonics. So just have a look at this screen grab. This is the exact same setup with the amplifier working with the crossover distortion um, in progress. And you can see the third order, order harmonics are much higher. And if you look at the peak labels and then refer to the table at the top left hand side, you can actually uh, see um, the, the frequency of the harmonics as, uh, as they go up. Okay, well I hope that's made some sense. As I said at the beginning, this video hasn't really been about um, distortion and how uh, uh, class AB and uh, push-pull amplifier stages actually work. It's really been about visualizing what's actually going on in a circuit. And that's one of the things I've found um, tremendously valuable as I've gone through fairly steep learning experience about electronics in this this last year or so and that's the great thing about even a modest uh, oscilloscope it's able to help you to visualize what's going on inside those circuits and I think that's a very valuable part of the learning experience and I hope you've found that too okay that's it for this video if you've liked it please click thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down. Either way, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.